All right, back out at the carport garage. Working on the cars a little bit. This one right here, I pulled it in. Got to do a little, few things with this one. And then if y'all saw in my last video, I wasn't able to race on this one because uh, I had um, a braided ground wire. That ground wire right there, it's braided metal. <coughs> Ran from the uh, the head to the frame. It was ran to the head, then it went down underneath here with all these wires, then over to the frame. But apparently, it grounded out on the alternator, made my battery go bad, and it melted a hole. The inside of this is like PTFE. It's like a plastic, but um. I went and got a 3 16 inch bar my cut the burn marks it had it it was burnt twice but only one burn spot was leaking but I cut those out and I put that barb in there and it's not leaking now I probably put some zip ties on that or not zip ties but uh, screw clamps on that and be good to go but I did order another one but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one out and put some screw clamps on it and save it for emergency in case uh, I ever get a hole in one again but um i ordered something to relocate the alternator over there it was the ict uh, billet one it was like 220 bucks but i ordered that and i ordered some um some pops for my wastegates so i could uh you know run some pops off the wastegates so they're not just shooting straight out like that that one goes straight down but i'm still going to add a pop to make it go down more and i'm just going to put a 90 on this and have it go down just a little bit past the top of the wastegate but on this one right here the uh we i raised the motor up took the oil pan off and um put a a, a bung in the oil pan because the way we had the oil drain run, it wasn't going downhill that much. The turbo was smoking. Thought that was was causing it to smoke. So I took the pan off, put a bung in the pan. It's more downhill now, but it still smokes. I think this one, this has too much crankcase pressure. We might have to get a like a little pump tank, surge tank, whatever you call them, pump. A pump for that. People... Some people mount their turbo so low that you, the oil can't just drain by gravity, so they get a pump. And I think I think that's probably going to be what we're going to have to do is get a pump to pump it out of the turbo. But anyway, for some reason, when I lifted the motor up, the gauge quit working. <laughs> that's the second time these uh, these gauges have failed on me for apparently no reason. Now this wire was up against the exhaust. Maybe I had something to do with it. I don't know. Uh, and then I'm gonna his catch can gets a lot of water in it for some reason I'm gonna clean it out real good we did have an issue before where we put head studs in this thing and the head studs I've always tightened them head studs down and then backed them off a little well if you do that on these they wobble so much uh, even with the ceiling on them water came out and got in a roll and that got that real dirty, so I'm going to clean that up. Actually, I might just put mine on there. Because um, I took mine off to drain it because it's above the alternator. I didn't want to drain it on top of the alternator. And there wasn't nothing in it. Absolutely nothing in it. It dries the bone. So I'm going to put his, mine on his, and his on mine. And see, see if that helps. I'm, I'm going to clean this one out real good regardless. But, um, yeah the game plan today uh, change the gauge out and uh, fix the rear end leak and I'm gonna clean the inside of the rims real good um, wheel rim whatever you want to call it I always call it the rim if it's just the rim and I call it the tire if it's just the tire but you put them together I call it the wheel that's the way I've always done it because it don't make sense to me to call the rim a wheel when it ain't got a wheel on it <laughs> but anyway that's what's on the list today. And um, yeah, we're getting these all ready because I-64 in Owensville, Kentucky is having a, a race September the 16th, I think. 
and uh, we're going to hopefully get both cars to that. I don't see why we shouldn't be able to, but uh, we're going to drive one. I'm going to drive mine, and then uh, we're going to trailer Christopher's. I don't know how good job the tire or not, but them tires are shot. Well, this tire's shot. That one ain't that bad. I don't know what caused this one to go bad, but it's showing some core in some areas. But uh, Christopher got some new tires over there. We got to put those on. We got to get an alignment also. All right, jack the car up a little bit so I could get a drain pan in there. Try to catch as most of that as we could. And I took both fittings out just because before this was wobbling inside of there. So I replaced both fittings, put put some, uh, some of that sealant tape on there. Got them both replaced. Ran it up here, all done. And uh, now we'll uh, back it out, let it run a little bit, make sure it's gonna work after we uh, top the radiator back off. Yeah, see this thing's filthy. <laughs> From where it got water in the oil. There's a big mesh thing in there and it just gets all stuck up in it. But I'll clean that one out. I'm just gonna put mine on it for now because mine is bone dry. I mean bone dry. I opened it up and there wasn't even nothing in it. And I haven't drained it in forever. So apparently mine don't have that much bulb by apparently. It's all in the hoses too. I'm gonna have to clean the hoses out. I wound up taking the hoses off for the catch can. I sprayed carburetor cleaner through them, but he got a lot of it out. We didn't get all of it out, so I hooked them up to a water hose and shot water through there. So I just let them hang and dry. Let's uh, back it out and see what we got. Oh, also, in another video, I had a transmission leak. I retorqued the bolts. That seems to be gone. Thing starts better than my car starts. Well, I tell you what, the steering wheel ain't off much, but it's off a little. Not much at all. But we're going to get it up to temp, fill the radiator up. Chris was having some rear end leaks too, so what I did was um, I took the um, you know the two bolts out for the caliper right there. Took the caliper off, slid the rotor off, and then I uh, I took the brake back and plate off, and you can pull that seal out of there. And I made sure the seal. There's a race in there, and then there's a bearing in front of this seal, and there's a race inside here the bearing goes into. And then this seal has a rubber ledge that goes on the outside of that race, but on the inside of the axle, and it's supposed to seal, but um, <laughs> they don't seal. So what we do, what I did was I put some of this Permatex uh, Super Tacky Gasket sealing on it, 80060. 
I put the seal, I slid the seal out and then I slid it back in to make sure the rubber went into the inside of the axle but the outside of the race and then I just put that stuff around it. I let it dry then I put more around it and then I put the brake back and plate back on and then um, but uh, yeah I put one coat on there I let it dry and then I put another coat on there and then I put the brake back and plate back on there and bolted it down now I just need to put the brakes and stuff back on it but um, that's how I fix that it ain't pretty but it works and nobody's gonna see in there anyway once the everything's on all right, so this was our old timing table for the uh, boost curve. This you can set the, you can only pull timing out with this. And this up here, you can pull it out based on RPM. But down here, this pulls it out um, based on boost from the map sensor. And anything below 15, well, 14.7 to be exact, is, is motor. And then anything above is boost. So 20 would be 5. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So here we was pulling about, let's see, here's the degrees of time in two, four, six, eight. Here's the map pressure. But um, we we're pulling over a degree of timing per boost after five pounds of boost. And the base was set at 30. Um, now on the new timing ramp, we're going to put the base at 34. Again, not going to pull anything till five pounds of boost, and then we're going to pull about a half a degree per pound of boost all the way up to, well, it went to sleep on me, all the way up to 21 pounds. So 21 pounds come across eight degrees from 34, uh, which would be a 26. So 21 degrees would be at about. Um, 21, 21 pounds of boost will be about um, 26 degrees of time and then I ramped it down a little bit more um, aggressive down to 30 pounds of boost would take out 14 degrees of timing which would be 20 degrees of timing at, um, at uh, 30 pounds of boost and small block Chevy it likes a little bit more timing than an LS motor does. So uh, for E85, I think that's going to be pretty uh, pretty good there. But um, what I'll do is I'll uh, go back through the rockers. I will load this tune in, change the front tires, and uh, get an alignment. And then uh, we'll see where the AFR is at from there, and then uh, we'll adjust accordingly. But uh, that's pretty much going to be it for, for this one. I'm going to get a new oil drain line today. I'll put that on my car. And then I'll uh, make a video of putting the uh, ICT billet passenger side head uh, high mount alternator on. And, uh, yeah. Y'all like and subscribe. Have a great day.